every galaxy we see in the sky is different. They share a morphological structure and as an astroimager it's nice to be able to use image processing techniques, some of which I've sort of developed myself as well, to actually show the full range of the personality of these galaxies. Spiral galaxies are, are my favourites of course because um, they're su such dynamic things. So M65 is a spiral galaxy. Even more in particular, it's a type SA spiral galaxy, which is the classification that we give it to indicate basic information about its shape and distribution of stars. It is like our own Milky Way, roughly composed of a disk of stars and dust with a quite a prominent central bulge of stars. So essentially it looks like a fried egg, but we are seeing it very highly inclined. So instead of seeing this nice round circular object, you're seeing something that is very elliptical in shape, and that's because it's tilted with respect to our line of sight. Image processing is something of a dark art. I mean, back in the days of film, where I believe this was taken, the dynamic range of film was such that to capture the outer parts of the spiral galaxy, the core would necessarily be overexposed. So we grew up expecting to see M65 looking like this kind of long cigar shape almost with the bright core. This is an image I took of it using the two metre Fawkes telescope on Hawaii. The observatory is located at an altitude of 9,000 feet under very, very dark skies. And on this particular night, the seeing conditions were great. With the processing steps that we can use once we've acquired the data, we can, for example, withhold the brighter areas around the core of the galaxy and at the same time boost the fainter outer spiral arms. So by applying those sort of techniques to this galaxy meant that we could get a very different view. M65 doesn't live alone in the universe. Like most galaxies, in fact, it has a few companions. So it lives in what we call the Leo triplet of galaxies. These are quite pretty galaxies. Three galaxies near each other in space and not too far away from us. So these two galaxies are both spiral galaxies, but they actually, despite the fact that they are in close physical proximity to each other, look quite different. In M65, the spiral arms are quite tightly wound. In M66, they're much looser and actually a bit asymmetric, indicating that M66 has been the subject of some drive-by encounter with another galaxy. But I want to point out another difference, which is in the type of stars that are in these galaxies. If you ignore the dust lanes in this galaxy for a moment, the rest of the stellar distribution is really quite smooth. It's not very lumpy. Whereas in this galaxy, you see lots of bright points of light indicating that's where stars are being born, that's where bright nebula are happening, gas is collapsing and being transformed into new stars. Whereas here, this appears to be a galaxy that has been undisturbed. It's not been poked, it's not been prodded. It's using up all its gas, turning it into stars, and then just living kind of a quiet life. If you're working with a digital SLR camera, um, if you're imaging something like the Orion Nebula, M42, then one thing that a lot of amateurs do is take short and long exposures and blend them together. But with this, the dynamic range of modern CCDs is so good that the, the whole range of pixels is included in that image and it's just a relatively straightforward case to tell the processing software just to withhold the brighter core pixel values and simultaneously boost the outer spiral arm, the fainter pixels. For me that's always the goal of image processing is to be able to show structure within the core which would normally be kind of overexposed or burnt out as well as the faint outer parts of the spiral arms. And this is actually a kind of galaxy that we here in Nottingham are interested in learning more about because several of us in this group are interested to know how, when and why galaxies switch off their star formation, how they transform and how they are influenced from outside factors. And these types of galaxies are interesting because they appear to be illustrating what happens when you just take a galaxy and let it evolve and run its course. And the contrast here is quite striking because these two galaxies are next door to each other. You would think they would probably have similar evolutionary pathways, similar lifetimes, but in actual fact, it seems that they don't. So M65 has had a pretty boring, uneventful life. M M66 has lived hard. 
That's right, at least in its recent history, M65 has just been taking it easy, M66 has been pushed around a bit.